Hi, my name is Ed Gonzalez, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about combining the power of IBM Watson with IBM Cognos Analytics. Now this is going to be a pretty high level demonstration of an application I created using the IBM Watson APIs and IBM Cognos Analytics custom controls. Now, IBM Watson has been around for quite a while, and I think at this point, most people have a general familiarity with uh, IBM Watson. And over time, I, it has grown into a huge ecosystem that now encompasses a wide array of different AI technologies that are used across many different industries, including healthcare, finance, IoT, and even law enforcement. But at its core, uh, is what IBM calls cognitive computing, which is basically AI and machine learning. Now, in 2014, uh, IBM exposed a set of Watson APIs on the Bluemix platform so that developers could tap into the power of Watson and use it in their own applications. If you do log into IBM Bluemix, uh, you'll find a, 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 a list of different Watson APIs that are available to developers. Uh, and most of them all center around um, language, language processing and language recognition. And some of the major APIs available here are the conversation API, which we can use to create chatbots, a language translator, which is pretty self-explanatory, but you also have text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and even visual recognition. But the API that I'm gonna to use today in my demonstration is the Natural Language Understanding API. Now we can use the Natural Language Understanding API to process unstructured text and retrieve some metadata from that so that we can get some insight into the content. And some of the different things that we can get out of it, of course, are um, sentiment analysis and primary emotions that are, that are expressed in that text. And IBM has a demonstration available to the public and this is the URL. You can go to it and give it a try yourself. Simply by pasting some text in there and then clicking on Analyze, you can get some uh, some insight into the, into the text itself. And as I mentioned before, you have different types of insights you can get. Sentiment, emotion, keywords, entities, categories, and concepts. Now, once uh, you've selected your API, um, you have a lot of different options on how to use and reference it in your application. For this demonstration, I chose to create a middle layer on the Bluemix platform using an application called Node-RED. Now, Node-RED provides a browser-based interface for wiring together APIs and online services. It, and it uses a concept of flows that are basically made up of, of nodes that we drag and drop onto a flow editor. Now, using this approach gives us a lot of flexibility uh, particularly if we want to combine our APIs with different services or use one of the data storage options available to us on Bluemix, such as DashDB or even MongoDB. Now, the, once you're in Bluemix, what you see here is a flow editor. And this is a, a screenshot of uh, a couple of uh, flows that I created, one using the language translator API and one using the natural language understanding API. And we basically uh, drag nodes from the right, I'm sorry, from the left side of our screen onto the right side of our screen and wire them together. Some of them are, are simple that we just set a couple of properties to and other ones we have to add a little code into it. In this particular one, I added a a HTTP node so that we can access this through a URL. Uh, added a function node where I did have to write a little code to get um, some uh, variables passed through on that URL. Tied it up with a, a the Watson API node. Created another function so that we could format the metadata that's returned from Watson. And then finally, I added a HTTP node to pass data back to uh, the calling application. So once I had this flow created, I went ahead and in the code for my Cognos custom control, I added a reference to that URL, that URL that, 
that lets us connect to that API. Very simple, very easy. So um, now that we have that, let's go ahead and jump right into a demonstration. Okay, well, I switched over to Cognos Analytics. And what we're looking at here is a very simple report. Uh, and this report contains some products from Amazon along with uh, reviews that the users gave these products. Um, and we're looking at four uh, very simple columns. We have the product ID, the name of the product, the, the review that the user gave it. So this is basically unstructured text that the user actually input. Uh, and it looks like this one may actually be for the wrong product. It says batteries instead of Twizzlers, but we'll ignore that for right now. And then finally, a user score. And it's anywhere from one to five, one being the worst, five being the best. And this gives us a nice comparison point because we can now compare the sentiment and emotions used, expressed in the text to the score that the user actually gave it. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into uh, page design so we can add our custom control. Uh, so from our toolbox here, we're going to grab custom control. Let's drop that right onto our page. Um, and we're going to add some properties for that. So you go to our module path here. I'm going to add this in here. Now this is going to be different um, for each user and each install actually. Uh, I happen to keep my controls in my local host in a directory called controls. And this particular um, control I call language cells.js. And let's just hit that, hit OK, and then let's just go ahead and run this real quick. All right. So uh, just as a side note, the first thing that you might notice here is that the, the look and feel of the table has changed. Uh, in my code, I added a little bit of um, uh, functions to uh, override the default settings for the tables. But what we really want to look at here is this button that we added. And, it's, and uh, I labeled the button Analyze. Because when we click this button, it's going to loop through our table, uh, pluck out the text, our review text, send it to the Watson API, and return um, some of that metadata that we were talking about earlier. Two pieces that I'm looking for in particular are going to be the sentiment analysis and the emotions expressed in the text itself. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and click on that. And then we can see that it comes back pretty quickly. Uh, I only have 40 rows of data in this uh, particular report. What the Watson API is used to processing you know, hundreds of thousands of rows of data. So 40 rows comes back very quickly. But what we can see now is that to our table, we added two new columns. We added uh, sentiment and emotions. Now, uh, sentiment is a scale from negative one to positive one. Uh, so the closer you are to positive one, the, uh, it's going to be a positive uh, sentiment. Closer you are to negative one, the, it's going to be a negative sentiment. Uh, and then we have the emotions expressed here. And most of these uh, texts are going to contain more than one emotion because it basically parses through the text and looks for words that are associated with, with joy, anger, sadness, fear, and disgust. So the more text you have, the greater mix you're going to have between the different emotions expressed. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these here. Uh, we can see uh, in this particular one, uh, it got a negative review, a one, probably the worst review uh, that you can give it. Um, and when we look at the, the sentiment, it is negative, but it's only 0.17 negative. And we look at the emotions expressed in this review, uh, we hit sadness and only a very little bit of anger, and we still have a little bit of joy. But the overall uh, emotion being expressed here is sadness. So this might be a customer you want to you reach back out to. He basically says that the product is stale and unchewable. Uh, he's ordered the product before and it was nice and fresh. So he's not angry, but he is sad. Uh, so this might be a customer we want to reach out to. Let's go down a little bit more. Uh, uh, this one is a little bit more nuanced. It is, in a, again, it's a number one. It's negative. And this time he does have uh, sadness and a little bit 
uh, of anger. And I think that's from this part right here where he says he would never buy it again. Um, let's go down, let's pick another one here. Here's another one, uh, negative, it's a two. Um, uh, and the expressing negative uh, emotions here, or negative sentiment, uh, and it's, uh, but the high point here is sadness. Uh, we go down, it's the same thing, a lot more mixed. So it basically just gives you some insight into um, the review itself, a little bit more than just the user score. So you can determine which ones you want to follow up on, whether you want to follow up on ones that express uh, high levels of joy, high levels of sadness, or high levels uh, of anger. So that's, that's basically it, nice and simple. Let's go back. So in conclusion, uh, we were able to see that combining the Watson APIs with Cognos custom controls was actually pretty easy. And it allowed us to tap into the power of cognitive computing and the whole Watson ecosystem and bring it right down to the report level. Now, the real power of IBM Watson comes from its ability to process uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of rows of data. But using this approach allows users to drop a custom control onto their report and do some analysis on smaller sets of data on an as needed basis. And this fits really nicely into the whole idea of BI on demand. And then also, I've heard some rumblings that uh, future versions of Cognos Analytics will provide some native support for these uh, Watson APIs. And whether or not that's true or not, this approach still allows us some more finer control over how we interact with the Watson APIs. And then finally, uh, this was indeed a high level uh, demonstration. I didn't get too deep into Bluemix, Node Red, or even the code I used for the Cognos custom controls. So if you want some more information about that, feel free to reach out to me. You can either hit, hit me up on LinkedIn or send me an email directly. Uh, and also, if you like this video, then be sure su to subscribe to this channel. I have been a little slow with videos lately, but I have plenty of more IP and plenty of more demonstrations that I'm going to be sharing in the future.